Oh my gosh, these are the first players we're casting today that have adhered to the dream hack rules for the European qualifiers, Zombie Grub. Because he is in the bottom hey, left with an approved color. It is the blue Protoss. Invasion Esports are stum. And I got the name right, right? 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 Okay, good. In the top right, as the red Protoss, it is Welmu. Welmu, I feel, is like one of the most unexpectedly great players. Where uh. if you expect Welmu to do well, he will actually lose a lot of the games you would expect him to win. But when you don't expect Welmu to do well, he actually pulls it out of like his ass and he, he, he just knocks it, whoever down. He's like, what, number... He, he was like, last time we were looking at him, he was like number four, number two on, on ladder for GM2. Like, he's not really at all bad. Mm -hmm. But he just... It, it feels like he chokes in these weird situations. Um, Harstam, by the way, and Walmu both know each other. They've been to many events together. They've probably discussed strategy many times. Like, there's a bit of friendliness between the two of them. And the scary thing is when you do know somebody like that, you also know the way they play. So there's like some extra level of metagaming that goes on, like... You know, if, yeah. if you play against Harsom 100 times in 99 of those games, he opened Stargate first. When you play in a tournament setting like this, you got to guess, will Harsom play his normal build or will he change it up entirely because he knows that I know that he knows. It's like the Death Note logic. Um, okay, these probes are getting gonna... like these stupid pylons dangerously low. I think I don't think Wellmoo will kill Harstoms, but Harstom might kill Wellmoos. That's so stupid. No, the no. mothership core. The mothership core should save this. Well, I don't. It. I don't know. She's kind of slow. Uh, she's just oh a, you know, God. still get a couple of shots this in. This is so dumb. <laughs> oh, she's gonna overcharge her. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Damn. we're making light of this, but now the mothership core that goes across the map might not be able to recall. I actually don't know the timing on hello how much energy it'll have floating across the map. I guess maybe it'll have that 50 for the recall, but that pylon getting down to the 30 health was certainly, I think alarming to Welmu. Like, let's be real here. If he had taken one extra second to build that mothership core, if he had slacked a little bit and actually picking it up to move it, like, maybe that pilot goes down. And while a pilot kill is not devastating, a supply block can be this early on. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, it's so funny to see that happen, but I'm, I'm gonna guess it happens more commonly than we think, because that's not the first time we saw a probe do a surprising amount of damage, although that is the first time we've seen it really almost kill a pylon. Uh, which is how common wall offs are now in this, in this matchup, and how oh, late they get doesn't units. have energy, so it's very yeah. important you pull that back right away. <laughs> it is, uh, but you know, it didn't get a scout. Like I don't think he was ever going to think that he was going to get a lot of probe kills. I think he just really wanted to see what was going on. Um, but uh, there's not much. There's a nexus. He's going to try and dip in, see the second gas at the very least, with anything back there. Does try and get a probe, but that's a little too dangerous. Yeah, a little bit too risky, but it does get the recall off, so. Uh, unfortunately for Walmart, not to get too much done, but both of them playing blindly, I guess, well. You know, they took expansions. Nobody played 2 1 Basie on this one. Uh, it is worth noting that Walmart had to run a Stargate, so he's going to be getting Phoenix out, which will serve a pretty nice purpose in this game. We've been seeing Phoenix actually. Uh, what was it? It was Huck, right? The first player we ever saw beat Disruptors without his own Disruptors. And a lot of that had to do with like the Phoenix play and whatnot. Maybe that's me and Fear Dragon. Uh, I don't know, but it might have been you and Fear Dragon because the first time I saw Disruptors beat was by Charge on Archon, <laughs> just overwhelming amounts. Well, Not my point of it still being the Phoenixes they they play a certain role when it comes to harass, but proving that they've got that place even later into the game. Now, mm. the one thing I get a little bit worried about knowing that these two players are so good uh, at this matchup and good at fighting each other is that this could go to Golden Armada days later. I kind of hope that's not the case. I find Blink. Stalker, Disruptor, incredibly exciting and fun. Tempest and Carrier, not so much. <laughs> it's always hyped to the first two carriers, then it gets up to 12 and you're like, okay, I'm done. Well, it's more like it gets to 12 and nothing happens for another 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's certainly true. Um, I, I agree. Blink, Stalker, Disruptor is, is the most fun that PvP has been in a while. You could... Oh! Uh, if, it, if you were... Uh, oh, that was powering his Blink! <laughs> well, that's awkward. That is very awkward. Um... <laughs> I was gonna say, in Heart of the Swarm, and maybe even in Wings of Liberty, you could appreciate the the movements that went into PvP, but it was not very um, 
The problem was it was too flashy. Like, it didn't last for a very long time. You, you build up a huge army, and then you died instantly. But um, there was a lot of micro and positioning and whatnot. But Blink Stalker Disruptor, for what you think should end even quicker than Colossus Wars back in the day, usually they just they both make mistakes. If one person makes a mistake, the other one gets too eager, and the other one makes a mistake, too. That's what makes it so fun. But yeah, consequence of action. We might just have Welmu, I mean, go for immortal <laughs> charge. I mean, Arsum has yet to get to robotic space by getting Blink, and the consequences have not been decided yet. So the reason Blink Stalkers, though, didn't... Because if you guys recall, like you just could not go Blink Stalkers and Hans. Like, to see Blink research at all outside of an all-in was just bad. <laughs> uh, but the reason that really fell off was because you had things like Colossus... It wasn't even about the Immortals, I feel like, so much as it was the Colossus, just really being able to sit back far away, and the Stalkers can never, like, blink into them. But with Immortals having the shields like they do now, you know, that same role's kind of perform where they're just these way too high health units, because the advantage to blink is, like, the surgical implications, right? Like, you, you pick one unit off and blink away, or you blink in and focus a unit down very quickly. And it's hard to do that with the new Immortal shields, so... But yes. what was going for is certainly not going to be too bad against what Harsim has, but Harsim is doing this to pair up with Disruptors, so that will be a whole nother can of worms once the Robo completes. Yeah, and a second Robo probably should go down as well. Um, the problem with Charge Out Archon is that I think when it comes to max out situations, it is worse. Um, Disruptor, like, you know, 10 Disruptors will just do too much damage despite, you know, hardened shields and the Charge Lots maybe running past. Uh, but I think for a mid game composition, that's when Immortal Charge at Archon looks better against Disruptor Balls with Blink Stalkers. Uh, it is a more interesting, uh, not more interesting, it's a different dynamic than Blink Stalker versus Blink Stalker. Um, obviously, one is a little bit more A movie than the other, but don't like, not like either one of these guys is, is going to easily win this game. I actually have Harsum. He does get the second Robo, but it's also going to add in. Uh, uh, high Templars, that's the word. Um, maybe feedback with Phoenix and then turn them into Archons. I would actually love that move quite a bit. It's a nice way to just remove the usefulness of Phoenix for, albeit temporary, months of times. Rarely do they have full energy, so you're not usually going to kill a Phoenix with feedback, but you know, the yeah. Archons afterwards are not too bad. We just had Ishi Ishihito. Ishihito. Two month resub. Thank you so much. <laughs> Whenever you hear that pause, too, it's just like, I'm contemplating, was that, it's not, did I say it right, but it's, was that close enough? Like, am I satisfied with that answer? I always, <laughs> Japanese names are always the easiest, and, like, because they have a pretty set, um, um, pronunciation guide, unlike English, where it's just like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Read? Red? Wind? <laughs> you, you don't know, you'll never know. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, Japanese always easy. Anyway, the I guess it actually really isn't in, in any way. It's Dusk Towers. It's a PvP where there hasn't been much action, and we're just going to wait until so, maybe they're both maxed. I like that upgrades have been consistent behind this, actually. We've seen a lot of emphasis on players who go Disruptors being a bit slacked off with upgrades because Disruptors don't benefit from them. But the point of this still is, like, the Disruptors can force a lot of engagements kind of akin to the way Tempest can. No, they don't have a lot of range, but you also can't engage them really while you're firing. Uh, a big aspect to note, though, is like whether they get Graviton beamed up by a Phoenix or whether they get picked off by an advancing Immortal Squad. If the Disruptor has itself dis uh, interrupted in any way prior to that shot detonating, it will not go off and it will not do that just outlandishly large amount of damage. So it is a little bit scary. Uh, Soccer's are plentiful, so Harsum's got, like, I'd say the meat of his army ready to go, but these are the real important mm -hmm. aspects as he starts getting these out, and it's only going to be a low count right now, so if he yeah. has to fight Walmu, as long as Walmu, I guess five's not too bad, as long as Walmu doesn't, like, clump all the zealots and hold position... What? Okay, he's doing this to burn energy, he doesn't want to get feedback. That was actually really cool. Oh. Right? Okay, yeah, 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 okay. I, I'd be surprised if Harsum actually had uh, <laughs> High Templars, but he does. Yeah, um, uh, the, the the thing about the feedback is, like, if they are full energy, they will die, but if they're not, then yeah. they won't, so it's okay. You know what's really funny? We don't have to worry about feedback on Mothership for any any longer. Uh, defensively, that is. No one brings the Mothership for with them anymore. No. 
Um, but anyways, the attack commences. Charge disruptors. shots can make disruptor shots very difficult to do. Oh. You don't want to hit your own. But disruptors also just hit like three of the archons with that money shot. They're gonna trigger a lot of damage on the immortals. Well, I'm hitting a pause. Uh oh, is there some uh -oh. lag going on in the middle of a fight? Oh man, uh, uh, he's getting some pretty. As we can see here, actually, some big damage on the third base. But while the third base is going down, the army supply still holds somewhat even. But this still looks so much better for Harstom. Unfortunate timing for that game freeze, though, at Awamu. I don't know what else he could have done, though, honestly. Like, <laughs> I'm not saying that it was an A-move army or nothing at all, but he was committing to an attack um, on purpose. It's a question of what micro went down after that when his game froze. Um, the thing, <laughs> I guess the thing about Wilma's army is that even with the charge shots gone, if he just saved the immortals, they would still kill, like, they'd bust through a ton of stalkers, but he didn't save the immortals uh, either, and only two of them are able to back off. That surgical blink forward, just trying to pick off what he can of what's left. Uh, you mentioned that nobody brings the time warp or the mothership quite forward. Well, but she is, took forever to get here. So here's here's my argument, by the way. Time warp is pretty garbage right now. Not only because it takes so long to land, but once you're inside of it, it's really not that big of a deal because of how long it takes to set up. So I'm wondering if, like, how do you make time warp d more dangerous? And I was like, why don't they slow attack speed in a time warp? Like, that actually doesn't make sense to me. Or that may be too OP. Well, okay, if maybe not slowing the enemy's attack speed, maybe boosting yours to encourage you to stand in it or something? Like... Because then the defender would know where you're bad. sitting. Yeah. I, I feel like it's so bad where, the way it is now. Like, you, wanna... you don't ever see it used other than like, oh, I gotta use my energy before I die. Like, yeah. I want to note that I mean the thing about the militia core in late game PvP is that it's it's never quite super useful anywhere, especially if it's gonna get feedback. But like, if it's gonna defend at home, if it's 12 minutes into a macro PvP, they're gonna be warping in 12 zealots anyways. Like, close to can only do so much. But offensively, like. Time warp is really hard to set up, and recall um, with a huge army might only recall half your army. So, oh, the mothership core I feel is so so important to bring with your army in Heart of the Swarm, and it's just yeah. people don't care anymore. Like, see the void. All right, so the disruptor kits ended up being pretty good to start. One picked off six zealots, not too bad. Wellman's army supply still holds pretty strong and pretty high. And Harstam, if he fucks this up, like if any of these disruptor oh. shots don't land properly, this is his it army, is but all the stalkers. Imagine if Wilma had a couple of disruptor shots right here, though. I know, right? Like, it's Harsom's choked in. Like, every single zealot went down to those disruptors without charge lots, no chance to win. GG gets caught, and Harsom will take game number one in this brand new best of three. Uh, you're going to have to poke him. I don't remember what the second map is. I wrote it. It's Arena. Nice. All right. Ad break while we set up Arena. We'll see you guys in two minutes. All right. Game number in this best of three as we get closer and closer to the end of the day uh, looks like in the top half of the bracket Bly knocked out TLO by the way so Bly and Goo are currently competing for that number one spot in the winners uh, the winner of this will go on to fight against Nurchio so PVZ guaranteed that's pretty awesome to see uh, also updating that Gung Fu Banda did defeat Raynor so he's playing against Vortex in the other uh, losers bracket round so again, getting closer and closer here to the end of the tournaments but only two people can make it through one for the winners one for the losers and we are currently in the losers bracket casting these guys and in the top left side of the map it is going to be the blue protoss Wellmu. in the bottom left as the red protoss it is invasion esports harsome Jimmy, Jimmy time! Just hey. be sub for 25 months. That's over two years. I've been making the same silly voice every time you read subs. Thank you so much, Timmy, <laughs> Jimmy time. And I've been imagining a fat kid, like, wiggle the belly around. What is this you creep emote? Is that a global one? No. It's you. Bible thumb. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> like, that actually looks like a great emote. That was a great mustache. It also... Looked like they just painted the mustache on the face, though. <laughs> didn't like, you gotta get? Didn't Artosis have like a really terrible mustache for a while too, or something? Or is that no? Like the Photoshop, week. the Photoshop one of him is like the. Uh... Yeah, for like a week there's like a Photoshop of him with um, a, I don't even know what mustache you want to call it. <laughs> I want to say Mexican, but that feels racist. <laughs> it it is. <laughs> Can confirm. Anyways, um, 
Some Jazzy 4K views is a lot. Yeah, it feels fantastic. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. And of course, if you aren't already following the channel, we almost never advertise this except for the end of the stream. But do us a favor and hit the follow button. We are casting a ton of StarCraft up until we leave for DreamHack Austin itself. It's extra cool for us to be able to cast these qualifiers because we get to see which players are definitely going through and which ones we'll meet and hopefully get to see more of in Austin. Um, speaking with a couple of the players, because I don't know if it's been announced for some of them, so I won't say anything. But even the guys who've been dropping out, they say, like, oh, well, it sucks, but, you know, I'm still going to Austin. So for me, I was like, oh, cool. I'll see you there then. I hope, uh, hope to have a good time. Yeah. It's pretty rare nowadays to have a North American uh, tournament, so. Yeah. Well, apparently not because Montreal, right? Back to back well, here. Still, yeah. I, Two. Oh God. <laughs> I still think it's funny for me because like one of my first, like honestly, got pro gaming inter pro gamer interactions was with Harstam. Uh, for those who don't know, I think it was like MLG Anaheim. I want to say it was like one of the first events I ever actually went to, and we went to Korean barbecue, and I think it was like Harstam and Mini Razor. And the first thing was like just meeting Harstam. He's a fun guy. Like if any of you have ever actually uh -huh. met Harstam, you know he's charismatic. He's funny. Whatever. He's a goofball. But I didn't expect him to be able to fucking eat twice as much food as I could. And this is what I'm still pushing like 300 pounds, right? Like this guy could just eat and eat and eat. And he was just an absolute pleasure to hang out with. So I had a really great first experience at an esports event. And since then, I've only ever enjoyed meeting players. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I think, uh, you know, first experiences have to be like, you know, what what do you mean by first experiences? Like actually like hanging out with them for more than an hour or like meeting them with, like a handshake? I think both. Because I mean, that was kind of the case for me in Anaheim, right? Um, like... No, not for me. Because <laughs> my first experience would have been seeing Marine King walk by and being like, wow, he smells super nice. <laughs> well, okay, that's... Uh... Dude, you know I, I hate, I was I hate a... actually... No, hang on. Real talk for a moment before the fight begins. I hate that when you use smell to describe something, people automatically go to creepy. Like you should Wait, be like, able to I say a girl smells neck and like <laughs> uh. <laughs> very like your nose and his head. Mm. <laughs> That's guilt. <laughs> All right, so Harsh actually has a couple of force fields, and this is a little bit funny to look at when you when you consider how not great these sentries are going to be for trading. But the idea is that it's supposed to keep them in range of this photon overcharge, and its own stalkers plus the overcharge are certainly a lot of damage, and Walmu actually doesn't take a great trade. Worst part about this is having to go up for the high ground vision to take that fight, so you have to get in range of the overcharge. Yeah, this is already a little bit dangerous for Walmu, who really would have wanted a better start, and it's not going to get any better. A single zealot to soak quite a few blint or, um, regular stalker shots, barely survives. We have an immortal coming off of Harston too, and that's really going to seal the deal. Still one more overcharge, His... probably two. I mean, the overcharge aside, he's already got, he's already got a lead here with the stalkers. Now, Walmu's getting a couple more in, but he is also putting a gateway. No Nexus back at home. Make no mistake, this is pretty dedicated at a Walmu. And if he can't win with this all in, then Harsom will walk away with a 2-0. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's actually looking very, very disappointing in uh, how this is going to end for Walmu. You know, like this was... Oh, the Mothership Core going down also... Okay, that it wasn't stings, that scary. But it's also high ground vision he could have possibly had when pushing forward. Yeah. It just, um, this push was very scary. Harsom was well prepped for it. I guess maybe Welmo was hoping to find him without the pylon quite set up yet, uh, without mean, a force field available. Up 1 0 in the series. I don't think it's such a bad guess to think maybe my opponent's playing greedy. You know, I just, mm -hmm. I just think they lost. Maybe they want to try and extend that lead, but. Uh, yeah, you're right. Like this, this wasn't the case for poor Wellmu. So he's got his own sentries, and I think for him, like you use the two force fields to somewhat pinch units in. So like, you're not trying to wall off all the stalkers in like one giant force field, but make it so the immortal can't really escape easily. Hopefully, pick it off before the force fields wear off, and he can crab walk around them. I, but even then, like picking off, a, a, surgically removing an immortal from this fight, or even a couple stalkers, is not the way that's going to work to win. Uh, there's no blink on either side of this. So I hit my microphone. Sorry, guy. <laughs> Yeah, no blink. Um, the force shields might also have been used to try and just push that mortal forward if they got the opportunity, but uh, now that Harsom's the one kind of pushing out here, going to have his own concave, might not work out. The uh, Plus the hardened shield makes it a lot more a lot more difficult to actually snipe it. So I think Harsom's just got it, but I like what I'm almost trying to do to mac her out of this as he realizes it's not going to work. He's going to try and just contain Harsom, make him feel like he can never really expand, and then expand to a gold, which is... 
This is actually Harsum needed to check this too, because I guess I didn't realize, but he hadn't seen it. There was no uh, no base taken over here. The probes were hidden, however, and he is still looking around the map. So I don't know if he'll happen upon that gold or not. But Wamu was trying to hide this, like he was really trying to hide this. He pulled the probes back. He didn't want to see what's going on. Force fields go down like crazy, and do surgically remove some of the stalkers here from Harsum, who's not going to use his own force fields to try and bully back Wamu. Now, the Immortals, they can't get into the fight right now, but the second they do, they're going to have a great time just chewing away at this Stalker count. Meanwhile, the Adept doesn't scout a base up here in the top right, but he's he's got to wow. check that gold. I mean, it's so <laughs> common that like when you take a hidden base on this map, it's going to be the gold. I, I didn't even think that Wilma's going to be able to transfer, but he does transfer quite a few probes, so ah, he's mining go. not so bad. Okay, well, Harsum does scout this, but that, that fight went about as well as Wilma could have hoped for. He's still down in army supply, but at least the Immortals weren't attacking him. The problem is that they are still alive and growing in number, and now yeah. they are getting on top of the Sockers. And the Sinchies are pretty much out of juice, so the fight's not going to go well for Wilma. Meanwhile, that base is uh, not being ravaged, but he knows that he can't follow this up if the army goes down, so GG gets called and Harsum. We'll take this series 2-0. Congratulations to him as he goes on to fight against Nurcio next. Now this is going to be a doozy of a match because the fact that Nurcio's in the loser's racket already astounds me. But that uh, mm -hmm. that's uh, damn. Says, he says, I, I got this matchup figured out. Unbeatable in PvP, my friend. Hearthstone I'm feeling very cocky about that win. Well deserved too, because he handled it perfectly. So, uh, yeah, we'll cast. Uh, assuming we don't get kicked out, we're gonna be casting Harston versus Nurcio, ideally next. Uh, we'll follow versus Nurcio though. So that's gonna. Yeah, Guru Blaze only just started, so we're good. Unless they hold it, which would be. It is getting to that time, I suppose, where they might start holding the semifinals of the losers. I don't know, though. Because we still need to do that, plus the finals, plus the grand finals of the losers. If you are interested in who's going to qualify right now, because there's a qualifying match going on, that is on the DreamHack main. Bly versus Gudu. Mm. Sorry, I was just messaging hard stuff. Okay, so we're gonna be yeah, we're gonna be doing following him versus Nurcio, so we'll get that going here in a moment. Um just gonna squeeze in some breaks of an ad ad breaks. Speaking backwards, I'm getting I'm tired, fuck. Energy drinks wearing off. We'll see you guys here in a couple of 